So when I was in my 20s, I would say late 20s, actually, no, early 20s to mid 30s, um, my mantra, and it was more than a mantra, it was something that I, I think um, it was a blueprint that I subconsciously, unconsciously traced daily. And it was this, it was, who's coming with me, right? As in, who am I going to love? Who's coming with me on my journey? And then the second question was, where am I going, right? And because that was my mantra, I was always looking for someone to love, hitting pause on life until I found someone to love. I was searching for my quote unquote person. And once I found my person, then life would start, right? Once I found my person, then I can build or then things will fall into place. And of course, this is, this is a very powerless uh, <laughs> uh, belief. And it put me in kind of a chasing state when it came to love. And so, yeah, my whole quarter of life was falling into the trap of my life doesn't begin or it's not complete until I have found, quote unquote, the one. Now, I thought I did find the one, uh, lasted about five years, got married. And then after my divorce, and I think I think it was I think it was a a combination of two books. I don't know where I read this. I think it was from Sam Keen, Fire in the Belly, which is an amazing book. Um it was the combination of that book and The Way of the Superior Man by David Dida. Uh that also a life changing book. Uh that book is a little bit more spiritual. And uh I realized that I had the mantra um in reverse order. So then my mantra became, where am I going? And then who's going with me? And this was a game changer. This changed everything because it freed me of the desperation and uh, the chasing state of hitting pause on life until I found love, right? And so now, number one, where am I going? So every day, where am I going? What is my true north? What do I want to build? Um, what is my hero's journey? Where is John Kim going? And then, secondary, who's coming with me? And it didn't mean that uh, someone was just coming uh, with me to do my life, and 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 you know they didn't have a life of their own. It, it just meant like who's coming with me, as in we're going to do this together. But who's going to and – I, and I stayed away from this whole idea of my person or the one. I think those are also traps, you know, um, because of how we've been programmed um, about love and the power of love and a partner and how it's, you know, not – how if you're single, it means you're incomplete and, you know, um, happy means – finding a partner, possibly having kids, running toward the picket fence, because of all of that programming, uh, I think it's dangerous to label uh, the person you choose to love as the one, right? Or um, your person. It's kind of cute. I get it. This is my person. I, I know that it's not supposed to be meant with um, possession. I get it. But uh, I don't know. It, I, I just think it's subtle, but all of those definitions i think contributes to something that um can disconnect us can contribute to the pressure of us finding love um it doesn't contribute to our autonomy you know and so what shifted for me so now i'm uh, from so from 35 to i would say uh mid 40s it was now about where am i going what am i building what am I meant to do here, you know, while I'm on this planet? And then, and then who's coming with me, you know? And I think that flipped things where I, would, I went from a, more of a, a chasing state to more of now of an attracting state. And I think what happens is when you start to put purpose, sense of self, 
things that are greater than self above um above love above um it doesn't mean that you are not um showing up through love right i think that's very powerful as opposed to showing up um through fear uh i think it just means that we're not desperately searching for love because that's the most important thing. I think a lot of people believe, and I was one of them, that finding love is everything. And then after that, you know, all the other things. So whether you are building a business or traveling or whatever makes you happy, that's all secondary. You got to find love first, right? Um, so after 35, I realized that's not true. It's not how I want to live my life. Where am I going? How do I want to share my gifts with the world? Um, who am I? Who am I? How am I? How am I um, going to be a conduit into people's lives? How am I going to be a catalyst? Right, like these other questions, and um, and then who's coming with me? So when I started to, when that would became my mantra, uh, it changed my behavior, it changed my energy, it changed my priorities, uh, it freed me of desperately trying to find the one. And so that was until uh, about 45, and uh, I have a, a, a partner now and a four-year-old daughter. Um, we have a house, you know. Uh, I feel like I've written some books, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of on, on my road to uh, – or been on my road to uh, helping other people and having a sense of purpose now for a while. But now I have a new mantra, and I think uh, as a 51-year-old, uh, and going into uh, moving into the afternoon of his life, um, now it's not even about love. <laughs> as in, as in, it's not about uh, finding love, um, and it's not even about purpose. I mean, both of those very important, of course. But now it's now my mantra is, how do I want to show up? How do I want to show up? And then the 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 second piece of this is, what do I need to let go of? And the reason why how do I want to show up is so important to me these days is because I feel like uh, life is short. And it's not just how do I want to show up in my relationships. I mean, obviously, but it's like, how do I want to show up to this workout? How do I want to show up to this session with my client? How do I want to show up um, with my daughter? How do I want to, So it's not just the big how do I want to show up in this relationship? It's in the moment. It's... um. Like today, I feel like shit, didn't sleep well, um, and it's it's a struggle for me just to do this episode, right? But I ask myself, how do I want to show up, you know? Um, I want to show up in an honest way. I want to show up in a way where I'm not uh, drowning in my distorted thinking and false beliefs. I want to show up in a way where I am light, not um, taking hostages and <laughs> into my darkness. Um that's how I, I want to show up. And, and of course, it's not going to be perfect. And of course, I'm going to have days that it's hard, harder for me. Um, but, but now that's super important to me. Now that's at the top. And then what do I need to let go of? Because as I move into the afternoon of my life, as I move into my 50s, uh, there's so much I need to let go of. And there are things I need to let go of daily, right? They're not just big things, you know? Um, I need to let go of residue from the past. I need to let go of uh, old beliefs that I carry about myself. I need to let go of how I think things should be done or how I think uh, people should act, you know? Uh, and, and it's not a one-time letting go because, you know, when you, when you think about letting go, if you just think, okay, I've let that go, I'm done with it, uh, you're going to be kidding yourself because, like, forgiveness – it's an ongoing thing. Letting go is an ongoing thing. And some days it's easy. Some days it's harder. Um, but it is, it is a practice. And, and this is why uh, it's become a mantra. So what does that look like? Uh, how is that impacting? You know, what does that look like in behavior? And how is that impacting me? Well, first of all, not to make life about love and work, which has become which, – which is, I think, for most of us, two of the – biggest life pipe pieces, right? That's where we put most of our energy and weight. Um, 
and they're of course important, but they are not everything. So just, just to shake it up a little bit, just to put those kind of, I wouldn't say on the back burner, but just kind of like put those, just drop them down a little bit. Um, that is, that is huge. As far as life design, that's huge. Right. And above that to put, how do I want to show up? How do I want to show up with people in the moment, in the day to day? How do I want to show up to this project, to this workout? How do I want to show up to this episode or how do I want to show up to, you know, anything? Um, what that does in behavior is it makes me focus on the moment. Uh, it makes me more present. It makes me not put weight on all the things that haven't happened yet. Um, I have a uh, what, what, one of my weaknesses is this whole thing of um, being happy when the phone rings, you know, when when things are good, when deals are coming through and partnerships and then and then getting depressed if the phone doesn't ring. Um, I hate that that still has a lot of control over my life and happiness. And so when my mantra is, how do I want to show up? It kind of releases me of those things right i'm no longer concerned as much i still am but i'm not I'm, I'm no longer concerned as much with production with um the scoreboard if you will so that's helped me tremendously and also it uh the, the ripple effect is me being more grounded in my body and being present enjoying the little things sitting and producing um, um joy nectar as i as i say uh, and then, of course, the other piss and pumping is um, what do I need to let go of? And so many things, so many things. Uh, these days, I need to let go of uh, I need to let go of old dreams that um, may not be for me, you know. And it doesn't mean that I'm quitting something. It means that um, there's going to I need to leave room for new dreams for things that I may not even imagined that that can play out and is possible that I never thought um because because we when we dream we 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 hold on to things that we frame and that are very specific and then we we want it to be that and most of life that's not what happens you know um you may you may be just as happy. You you may realize, oh, I I thought I wanted this, but I really want this now that I'm experiencing this. Um, I'm not saying that uh, your dreams are going to be any less, uh, but I do believe that they will probably be different. And I have to let go of how I want my life to play out and trust my story where I'm going and lean into um infinite possibility and what could happen that can produce just as much joy if not more uh but it's not in the package that i imagined so when i do that it forces me to trust something greater when i do that it forces me to trust my story when i do that um i have less anxiety because i'm not trying to trace an old dream you know Anyway, I don't know where you're at in your life. I know that uh, we all have these running kind of core beliefs and things that we're trying to trace, every one of us. Um, I think it's important to be aware of what they are. And uh, more importantly, I think it's important to know that you can change them. You know, the, the three different mantras I just, I just spoke of radically changed the behavior and energy of my life because they're so different. And so they're powerful. They're powerful, and um, I also believe that I wasn't meant to have this mantra that I have in my fifties and my twenties. You know, like I was, I feel like I was meant to experience these mantras in this order. There is a, there is an arc, there is an unfolding, um, there's a progression, and so I don't know if you're in your twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, but what is your mantra today, and is it honest to you? Ask yourself how uh, adapting and holding on to this, these maybe two or three beliefs, um, how is it impacting your behavior, your thoughts, your energy? And is that something you want for yourself? Is that the, the right mantra for you? Thank you for listening. Be well.